The following story is entirely true and revolves around events that took place just one year ago. It can be read as an allegorical critique of the Spanish Inquisition, and if you play Dark Side of the Moon while you watch it, it looks like a cluttered, chaotic music video. <laughs> On February 18, 2013, Virgin Islands Flight 509 disappeared in a tragic accident over the North Atlantic Ocean. All were presumed to have perished in the terrible accident. No wreckage was found, not even a floating Nalgene among the whitecaps. <laughs> there was a time when we weren't so sure that Whitman would come back for the 2013-2014 school year. It was kind of like when Dumbledore died in Harry Potter, except George Bridges isn't the most powerful wizard of our age, and Tim Reed hasn't been hunting any horcruxes. <laughs> Seriously, Tim Reed, it's like you're not even trying. I'm pretty sure I saw a sword in the bottom of Lake Umduckum. It was not until August that a wandering fisherman discovered an island just north of the prevailing winds of the Bermuda Triangle. On the sandy beaches, he found the entire flight alive. The following story is a recapitulation of the first contact between the fisherman and the island colony. Well, I'll be darned. I can't believe you're still alive. It's so cold. We burned honor species to stay alive. The writing was pretentious anyway. But what about all the students' hard work? All the hours in the quiet room on Facebook? It's all about the illusion of progress, old sport. Let the students think they're actually preparing themselves for the real world. Come, let me show you around. Can I get a college education for saving your lives? <laughs> no, no, we've probably already filled our incoming class with a bunch of degenerates from the Pacific Northwest who've lied about being presidents of 15 clubs in high school. <laughs> Don't be discouraged, it's how the system works. Come along now, now is the time. <sighs> There's the uh, tree. <laughs> And here we have the undisputed pride of the island, ASWAC. Let me tell you, old sport, these students are the cream of the crop. Well, what have you accomplished recently? What do we mean to this colony? Everything. 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 How long are our meetings? Six hours. Six. How many votes did it take to elect me? 75. Did I mention our meetings are six hours long? It's, it's really, really hard for me to put into words how much we, I, we, we mean to this colony. Take this rock, for instance. Using my innate ability to over-exaggerate the issues of the colony and disagree with reason and rationality, I recently mediated a six hour meeting and decided the rock should be moved from right here to right here. Excellent decision. <laughs> Change is a beautiful thing. Jeez, seems like things might be a little different if a woman were in charge. <laughs> uh, <laughs> don't be silly, you fool. That won't happen. Well, after I moved the rock here, there was a great protest. Some students started spreading the gospel from one group to another until the content of the message was so diluted that we had la lost all resemblance to truth. Time to protest, Aswak. It was really quite something. We made signs and everything, and I held a, mi a megaphone and I wore a suit. After hours of soul searching, I decided the rock should return to its previous position. Good decision. You know, it's, it's really about serving the students. Wait, where are you going? To put this on my resume. Yeah. Isn't it? Is that really the most effective use of your time around here? You know, old sport, it's all about creating illusions. Huh. Make them feel like they're doing something. Isn't it hilarious? The protest was packed. They all forgot about it the next week. But let me tell you, old sport, what really makes this colony so rich is our diversity. Take these students, for instance. <laughs> the pride of India. India? I'm from Egypt. 
<laughs> Tell us about China. I'm from Beaverton, Oregon. Beaverton. <laughs> and you? Uh, I'm from Texas. <laughs> and, and you're from uh, Iraq? No, I just told you I'm from Egypt. Look how easily they assimilate. <laughs> Don't worry, you'll get in the college brochure one way or another. Aren't these students rich with life? I bet you're wondering how we keep them entertained. I sure am. This place is depressing. Hey, 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 how are you? Come see the North Shore Beach, it's awesome. I hang out with my friends in storms, monsoons, summer, anytime. Hey, let me show you the coconut trees. I should really show you where we go to the bathroom. It's so This is such a good place. I so want awesome. my kids to I go here. Him. I want your kids to go here. I would marry your children. Have you seen the Flemings? I would hook up with any of them. <laughs> Who are they? Tour guides. <laughs> well, how do you keep them so happy? <clears throat> Pills, lots of pills. We pump them up until they've lost all touch with reality. Makes this place seem downright livable. Have you read College Prowler? And when did all these ladies arrive? <laughs> oh, those are the Alpha Fees. We really like them. They fit in really well and are way down to kick it. They can almost drink as much as the DGs, and they're almost more popular than the SIGs already. I, I didn't see any cigs. Well, there are only two, but they make really great drinks and don't smoke like all those betas. Hey, do you have any cigs? Are, are they hand rolled? <sighs> Suck your ass, ma. <laughs> Yikes. In the mic. So, is Greek life much of a problem in the colony? Greek life is pretty chill. We have all read the Odyssey, am I right? Get it, Greek? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I wrote a paper on how the Odyssey's heroic arc is just like Kanye's Yeezus album and The Lion King. <laughs> well, what about the fraternities and the sororities? Fraternity is a way of life, man. It's all about schisms. We were a pretty cohesive group until factions started to form, and now it's really different. Have you seen the five solar panels? But, yeah, but how did they get any sun living in Teak Shadow? Also, also, don't they distract from the goals of the colonies? Oh, is there hazing? Well, first of all, they had to cut down their trees. Um, secondly, the shadows actually help things run smoothly. As for hazing, the Teaks are off probation. Um, and the coffins actually help save space, so it's pretty chill, all things considered. <laughs> Brethren! <laughs> uh, so as you see, we... We, uh, we share food, which saves valuable resor resources on this island. Mm. <laughs> Next page. Mm, mm, mm. So, this really is a functional colony. I'm so impressed with what you've done here. But there's still one thing I don't understand. How do people stay so happy? It's a constant challenge, old sport. A constant challenge. We've promised their parents so much and taken so much of their money. How can we live up to their expectations? It keeps me up at night. Fortunately, I've started doing some improv comedy with the administration to keep our spirits up. We pick a new topic every week and joke about it until we've half split our pants with laughter. Well, what's the next topic? Divestment. <laughs> Seriously, I just about fell out of my chair at graduation last year when that student got his diploma and told us to care about the environment. They're so cute when they get combative. But what about Mother Nature? What about the fish ecosystem? We'll just keep buying windmills. That seems to give the illusion of sustainability. Where are all the faculty? Shouldn't the students be getting lessons about life in such an uncertain time? 
Well, old sport, we had to let the faculty go first. I made the decision early on to ration our food to the students. They're the ones who bring in the big bucks. But shouldn't you have tried to save the faculty? They're the most knowledgeable. Such good brains gone to waste. Sure, sure. They were nice folks, and the students did love them unconditionally. But on an island, you can't publish. <laughs> what good are faculty if they can't publish? It was the right decision. We should get you on the boat and bring you home safety. The news coverage is going to be unbelievable. We're going home, gang. <laughs> English majors to the back. The donors will love this. We're going to need a bigger boat. <clears throat> Thus, the story of the colony was told. It was eight months before Whitman College was able to return to normal. For his efforts, fisherman Ned Primo was given a Whitman College sweatshirt and a bumper sticker for his boat. It is with a heavy heart we remember the faculty who were lost on the island. In the end, their collective salaries allowed Whitman College to start a new landscaping project to build a water slide from the memorial clock tower to the president's house. A project deemed integral to the future of the college and Whitman College brand. After George Britt, I mean the colony rep, received great success in his elaborate, albeit destructive, ploy to attract donors, he chose to remain on the island where he had taken to the slow pace of life, which was a more recluse Florida, and nobody could criticize his golf game. <laughs> Illuminati. <laughs>